Hi, I'm George Crump, Lead Angel of Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the incredible speed increases that we're seeing in the uh, in the data center today. You know, with the advent and increased adoption of all flash arrays, as well as NVMe and NVMe over fabric and NVMe uh, over fiber channel specifically. Uh, joining me to help with that conversation, I've invited Adish Vishwanathan from Cisco. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. Uh, very excited to be here, and thanks for having me. No problem at all. So let, let's talk about this. What is so? I, you know, we were talking earlier, but it, it, it seems like as things get faster, they also get more complex when we try to sort of analyze them and not impact performance, right? Yeah. So the enterprise storage industry is going through historical perform historical transformation. On one hand, you have widespread adoption of all flash arrays. And on the other hand, you have technologies such as NVMe and NVMe over fabrics changing the whole landscape. Mm -hmm. So very high performance and low latencies are the goals of these trends. And millions of IOPS per second and response times in microseconds are becoming the norm. Right, and that, all that puts pressure on the network, right? Yeah, however, lab certified results is not a representation of what happens in a production environment. Right. So true. Uh, there are, it's a question of knowns and unknowns, mm -hmm. low risk versus high risk, and control versus uncontrolled. Um, you see, a production environment is like a multi-dimensional equation. Mm -hmm. uh, you, each component can act and perform on its own, but bringing all of that together is like you're bringing an orchestra together. Right, and they, they all interact with each other at some level, yeah. right? Yeah. So you really have to have very deep visibility into the performance metrics so, so that you can track how the interaction going on with each other and then you will be able to measure the performance at a solution level. So I, I would assume that that means we have to sort of change the traditional methods at which we kind of get to that data then, correct? Yeah, so if you look at a network today, uh, this is uh, you have the compute layer, you have the network and you have the storage layer. Uh, today, in, in the past, uh, the, the way the industry does is, you know, they, they, introduce, uh, they introduce like an appliance here which traps the data and sends to, sends to an external engine which does the analysis, mm -hmm. or they do a span of this and sends it to that. Right. Uh, the, the drawback with this is that you have to know where the problem is happening to introduce the solutions. It's not scalable, mm -hmm. it's very intrusive. So Cisco looked at this and we designed a solution which can really do this very natively by the switch. Okay. So you don't have to have these external appliances. Okay, so how'd you guys do that? Yeah, so uh, we have in our 32 gig fiber channel product line, mm -hmm. built-in capabilities within our ASICs, okay. which trap the header information of every flow which goes through. Okay. Uh, and customers can pick and choose which flow they want to monitor and how much they want to monitor. And this data is sent in an open programmable format. So we can send it to your data lake or Cisco can send this to a solution which Cisco provides called Cisco Sign Insights. Okay. Um, we are now announcing the availability of these capabilities, not just for SCSI fiber channel workloads, but also to NVMe fiber channel workloads. Okay. So let me erase this existing solution and walk through how the new solution works. Great. All right, so with the, the old system out of the way, why, why don't you tell me a little bit about what your customers are seeing? So uh, at Cisco, we are hearing from our customers that they're not seeing any f layer one issues. You know, they expect connectivity to be there and the host and storage connectivity to be there. Those problems are, you know, are gone for most part. What we are hearing is they're, they're unable to get the advertised performance of the solutions. Okay. Uh, so if you have an uh, environment where you have the whole compute stack, the network stack, and the storage stack, and if there's a performance problem, in the app, in, for the application, sometimes the storage infrastructure, which is the storage network or the storage array, gets blamed. Yeah. For Almost the, always, it seems. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and whenever I say this to a storage administrator, they are, they, are, they crack immediately. They crack it right? because they always get blamed. Right. And now these folks have to now either prove them right or prove them wrong. Right. And to do that, they really need high fidelity metrics to do that. Right. Sure. So the way we do is that. Our 32 gig product line has built in, uh, the ASICs can trap this header information of, of the flows which go in, which allows them to answer questions such as, how long a read or a write takes from a specific app or a server? 
So the solution is inbuilt into the DNA of the network, and you can turn it on with just a very one simple command. It's as, it's as simple as that, mm -hmm. unlike other solutions where you literally have to go with the professional services to turn it on. Right, right. So this is just a, a, something you do through the GUI or through, through the command line? Turn yeah, on? yeah, you okay. can do it through the GUI or the command line. And this data could be exported out, streamed out to your own, um, I would say, your own data lake. Or you can send it to Cisco SAN Insights product line, SAN Insights product. This is our analytics engine, which can take this data and provide actionable insights. Now with this announcement, what we're sharing with you is that we used to, we have this capability for standard SCSI workloads. Right. Now we are bringing this capability for uh, NVMe fiber channel workloads. I, and I would think that that's an environment where this type, type of analytics is really needed because you know, you buy this, you make that investment expecting X in performance, and if you don't immediately see it, you need to explain why, right? Yeah, and uh, we have seen this very often. Customers make very big investments in all flash arrays, and they connect to legacy applications or servers which cannot keep up with the performance of these all flash arrays. Right. Uh, and sometimes they're very disappointed that they make these investments, but they cannot keep up. Sure. With this capability, you can actually see where the, where the um, roadblocks are, where the congestion is, and be able to, able to pinpoint and take corrective actions. Prior to this, uh, going back to the case I talked about where the SAN storage or the storage team gets blamed, right. they actually go and look at logs, they look at some CPU utilization, memory utilization, and say, hey, things look okay for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see any issues. Sure. Right? What if you can actually go back and say that, hey, look, your SAP application is finishing the reads in this much microseconds. Your writes are finishing in this much microseconds or milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And this has been your historical trending of the reads and writes. And you're within the first standard deviation. Right. How, you can see the difference in the answers they're able to give. Oh, absolutely. On, on the both sides. The other capability I think we are bringing, which is very exciting, is that Think about the use case. It's like morning, 9 a.m., you come to your office, and somebody comes by and says that, hey, what the hell happened at last night, 10 p.m.? Mm -hmm. You know, my reports ran very slow. I could not get the performance. Go tell me, look at your systems at what happened at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. You know, and today, with this capability, we can provide a DVR-like functionality okay. where they can go back and take the performance metrics to that 10 p.m. in time, yep. like last night, Sure. and see the metrics for that specific host. So they can just go back in time, see it, play it back, and see what went wrong. Yeah. Okay, that so makes sense. And, and, you know, and in IT, it's very important to be able to support your answers with data and metrics, and that's what sure. this capability brings. Not, we, we are bringing not only to SCSI workloads, but also the fiber channel NVMe workloads. So, and going back to the, the, I thought the application example was really interesting, uh, where you talked about the read and, read and write uh, milliseconds and microseconds. It, so I, I would assume that if you went in and put an NVMe all flash array in and your host uh, read and write speed didn't change, that is evidence of an application error then, right? Because it, 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 you, you built this bigger pipe and it's just not taking advantage of the pipe. Is that right? Exactly, right? Okay. And that leads to additional congestion on the network because your arrays would be f super fast trying to send the data as fast as possible. Right. The network would get congested because you have a small pipe processing at the host side. Gotcha, okay. Right? So, but at the server side, at the application side, you're not seeing the performance. Right. right? And then we can, this, this data would actually pinpoint where the issues are and where the upgrades need to happen in the whole solution. As I mentioned, a production environment is like a multi-dimensional equation. Right. Right, so with this insights, you are able to pinpoint which of the component is slow and where it's slow and why it's slow and be able to then take remedial action. Well, and I think what's important, if I, if I got you correctly, is you're capturing this in real time as it's going through the network, right? So it's it's about as pure, if you will, of data as you can get. Yes, we, we capture the information in real time with no impact to the you know production traffic. Right, and that's, uh, that's thanks to those ASICs, those custom ASICs you guys built. Yeah, right? that's the only way we could do it real time, right? right. And any other solution would be, there would be a lag there. Sure. And we, send, we stream this data out to a data lake and you know you could have a time series a view of this, so mm -hmm. you can go back as much as long as you want to keep the data. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, also, you know, VMware obviously continues to play a big role in the data center. What are you guys doing on that front? 
So VMware has uh, made pretty big investments in Wavefront, mm -hmm. and this data could be streamed to Wavefront to provide a single pane of glass for not just the VMware layer, the compute, the network, storage arrays, response times, IOPS, at, at a per VM level, mm -hmm. as well as a per container level down the road. So you could get a true end-to-end -end view of the entire environment then. Exactly, Josh. Yeah, very interesting. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Josh, it's been a pleasure. So there you have it. If you're looking to move into the NVMe environment, NVMe over fabrics and uh, over fiber channels specifically, as well as investing in NVMe arrays, getting the full benefit of those investments is critical, and real-time analytics on the networks is a really essential way to get that done. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.